Hello and welcome to Carlube TV. In this video, I attempt to fix my Scirocco after it catastrophically broke down. Let me tell you a story. This is one of those perfect storm situations where everything that can go wrong did go wrong. Let me explain. On the day of the incident, I would just upgraded my phone and I was doing all the normal updates and cloning it, etc. When I got a phone call making me aware that my assistance was required elsewhere. I only noticed halfway to my destination that I would picked up my old phone in error, which no longer had a SIM card in it. After I completed the task required of me, I got back in the car to head home. It wasn't long after joining a dual carriageway, I noticed my car was starting to splutter a little bit. I thought this isn't good, I can't break down here, I'm in the middle of rural England, 40 minutes drive away from home. So I just soldiered on, nursing the car. As I drove down the dual carriageway, the misfiring was getting progressively worse, but I was still thinking, let's just get a little bit further towards civilization. Turning off the dual carriageway, the engine was now shaking violently, I knew I wouldn't get much further. Eventually, on a slight gradient at 20 miles an hour, there was plumes of smoke coming out the car. It was breathing its last breath. I managed to pull over on the side of the road outside this church, which was quite fitting considering I thought my engine was about to flatline. Of course, now I was stranded without a phone in the middle of nowhere. I had no money on me to call for assistance because, well, we do everything on our phones now, don't we? I prepared for the long walk home. Anyway, to cut a long story short, on my hike home I was saved by a farmer who lent me his phone to call for assistance. The assistance came and took me home where I was able to call the AA recovery. This is where you find me now with the AA man trying to diagnose the problem with my car. He did manage to get it started, which I thought was a minor miracle. but it wasn't sounding healthy. The technician's diagnostic equipment did indicate that there was low combustion in cylinder three and the car would need to be recovered. Unfortunately, due to my car being lowered and having a low splitter, he didn't have the vehicle that could do the recovery. He departed and I started the long wait for the next recovery van to arrive. It wasn't all bad though. I had my phone now so I did manage to find a pub down the road and I had a nice bit of grub. Four hours later and being pitch black outside of a church, the recovery van did come and realised that he couldn't tow me either. This AA tech, he thought it was a coil pack failure on cylinder three. He suggested that if I drive home keeping the revs low, he would follow me and make sure I didn't break down again. He was a nice guy. Next day with the information that I'd been given that should fix the problem, this is where you find me now. So I've got to the point where I've taken off the connectors for the coil packs to do that you just push these in and then they pop off you need to do all four at the same time the coil pack which I think is the problem is going to be this one here it's the only one that doesn't match these ones were changed within the last couple of years and on the OBD scanner it did point to the low combustion on cylinder three which is this one so we've gone out and got a new coil pack and um, we're going to test that. I also know the spark plugs were changed within the last two years as well um, so I'm not concerned that they're burnt out so we're going to give that a try and see how we get on. This is the replacement coil pack that I've bought from GCF Parts about £30 um, and we're now just going to fit that that's the part number for anyone that needs to do this job. So we just first of all need to take off the offending item. Hopefully this is uh, going to fix my problems. I should just pull out. Gratifying pop. Um, that's the part number that was on that one there. Yeah, we just need to double check it's all the same. So we'll just put the new one there. It 
does look the same. This is the one they said it was, same length and all of that. Um, although that popping in mechanism doesn't look the same. It doesn't actually look the same. We might need to go back to the shop. A couple of moments later, we've gone to GFC Parts, swapped over the, the um, coil pack. I did take out, so that's the one that's failed, come out of there. Um, I also took out this one, which came out of there, which hasn't failed. Obviously they're the same and not the same as the ones I had. So that one can go back in there in a moment. And the new one is a Heller brand one. Um, which apparently is the same as the Bosch I was told in the shop and we can see there's no part numbers on this one <laughs> strangely but it is the same so that one it can go in the bin let's pop this one in so it just needs to go down there like that it needs to get past the little there is a bit of resistance there And that, that is in. Let's put number one in as well. Again, a little bit of resistance. Let's make sure that's all the way home. Okay, so they should all be, all be seated. Looks a little bit higher. I look like they're in there. Okay, so I just need to put the rail back on, or the connectors. These all need to come off in one go, because otherwise you can't take the coil pack out until it, the next one's out. So they just push in. That's nice, nicely seated. And we'll go for a start up. I didn't give it absolutely full throttle, but I did rev it to about 5,000 RPM then. 
get back and put the engine cover back on and uh, call it a wrap on this video. Brilliant. Okay, that does seem to have fixed the problem, which is uh, good news. So we've put a new coil pack in, cylinder number three, and after the test drive, it's not misfiring, it's not smoking, it doesn't seem to be doing anything peculiar. So I'd say that's a win.